So at the top of my list, I have call to worship, ringing of the bells. Chuck. <laughs> okay. But, I'll start with the welcome, and then we'll have the ringing of the bells. Did he ring them already? No. We'll do the welcome and announcements. Welcome to our worship service. It is a tradition here at Ephraim to celebrate lessons and carols on the first Sunday of Christmas. This is a service of scripture and song that dates to the late 19th century. In this service, we will listen to nine scripture lessons which recount the fall, the promise of a Messiah, the incarnation, and the great commission to preach the good news. Each lesson is followed by a carol or other song that reflects on the lesson's message. After the service, please join us for refreshments in the fellowship hall. I also invite you to take home a poinsettia if it was one that you um, sponsored. If you have requested giving envelopes for 2020, they are available in the narthex. On Tuesday, we will be hosting a traditional watch night service at 11.15 p.m., ending at midnight with what, everybody? Pancake. Pancake breakfast for all to enjoy. At this service, you will receive a watch word, which is a scripture we hope will stay with you for the entire new year. If you can assist with the pancake breakfast, please speak to Bob Volpe after the service today. Let us turn our hearts to worship the Lord. Should we have the ringing of the bells? We did it already. I missed it. Okay, so let's begin with the prelude. Please stand as we sing hymn 286, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear.
concerns and celebrations, let us remember all who are in need of prayer this day. We will have a period of silent prayer and I will, will close with a prayer of intercession. Let us pray. Lord God, may it be our delight to hear again the message of the angels, in heart and mind to go to Bethlehem and see the miracle of Christmas. As we listen to the words of scripture, as we sing hymns of worship, may these words bring peace to troubled minds and healing to wounded hearts. May we leave here ready to spread the news through our words and actions that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us continue to worship our Lord with the giving of our tithes and offerings.
for the blessings of this and all our days. We thank you, gracious God. Accept, we pray, not just this money, but also our lives freely offered in gratitude for all you have done for us. Use them both in this place and wherever you might take us. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Please be seated. Our first lesson is a reading from Genesis chapter 3. This story takes place in the Garden of Eden, right after Adam and Eve have disobeyed God and eaten the forbidden fruit. I apologize, I'm going off script for just a minute to you folks who said don't go off script. And that is to say, that is to say, this reading has always been a challenge for me, so it's serendipity that I'm the one reading it. And I'm reminded of the Moravian Church motto, and I'm going to try to think of this as I read the reading, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, in all things, love. So that's what I'm going to think about as I read this, essentials. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me. She gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Please remain seated as we, hang, as we sing hymn 280, Emmanuel to you we sing, verses 1 and 2.
second lesson, we welcome Shayla. Our second lesson is from Genesis chapter 22. Abraham has been tested by God to see if he would willingly sacrifice his son, Isaac. God finds Abraham faithful and gives him this great promise. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham in a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and not, have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and the sand on its seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Please remain seated as we sing verses 1 and 4 of hymn number 300. Faithful Christians, one and all. Christ's birth is foretold by Isaiah the prophet. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall rest upon his shoulders. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it and with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Please stand as we sing hymn number 295, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs>
repeated. The fourth lesson. In Isaiah 11, the prophet speaks of the peaceful reign of Christ. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. With righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall graze, their young ones shall lie down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The sucking child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Please remain seated as we sing hymn 302. Lo, how a rose is growing, verses 1 and 2. the fifth lesson from Luke, the angel Gabriel brings a message to the Virgin Mary. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in, of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph from the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came, to, came unto her and said, Hail Mary, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Now when Mary saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. But the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give to him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you. The power of the Most High shall overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He shall be called the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Please remain seated as we sing hymn number 282, O Little Town of Beth Bethlehem, verses 1 and 2. <laughs>
our sixth lesson, St. Luke tells of the birth of Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And all went to be registered, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up to Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was, while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Please remain seated as we sing hymn number 292, Once in Royal David City, verses 1 and 2. <laughs> The seventh lesson is from Luke chapter 2, The Shepherds Go to the Manger. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said to them, Fear not! For behold, I bring good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Jesus Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign for you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them unto heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Let us stand and sing hymn number 293, Angels from the Realms of Glory, verses 1 and 4. I'm sorry, 1 through 4. 1 through 4.
be seated. The eighth lesson from Matthew chapter 2, the wise men are led to the star by Jesus. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. Calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ should be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they were seeing at it rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and being warned by God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country by another road. Please remain seated as we sing hymn, hymn 317, Brightest and Best of Stars, verses 1 through 4.
ninth lesson, St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which enlightens everyone that came into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing our closing hymn, number 294, Joy to the World. for the postulate.
Please stand for the benediction. May this day be blessed by moments of quietness, light in our darkness, strength in our weakness, peace in our stillness. Let us go surrounded by God's blessing this day. Amen. <laughs>